Hello everyone and welcome to Best Side Cycling. Today we're going to go over my experience at Seattle's 14th annual Cranksgiving, a super fun scavenger hunt where you go all over Seattle to local grocers, get items, and then deliver them to food banks. So this event was held jointly by Seattle Bike Blog and Cascade Bicycle Club's Pedaling Relief Project and this year's edition was super exciting with 168 participants that delivered 3,700 pounds of food. So that's a lot of food. Today Today's ride is going to be a lot of fun. You're going to see a ton of Seattle. So let's just get right into it. I'm here at Crank Saving 2023. We're about to start the event and it's a lot of people now. Raise your hand if this is your first ever Cranksgiving. Well, thank you so much for coming. So here Tom was just explaining how it's going to work today. Basically, we're going to be given two sets of scavenger hunt instructions telling us to go to different grocery stores, grab different items, and even some bonus challenges. As well as we heard from a lot of the food banks we are supporting today, such as Rainier Valley, University District, and Bird Bar Place where we're at today. So with that, we are basically about ready to go. So happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out. Have a great time. And if you have any questions, find a volunteer. They're everywhere. All right, so we have our team here, and now we're strategizing in terms of which places to go. So it's a bunch of different grocery places that we need to hit, as well as we need to grab a ton of different items. So we're going to start head on, heading out in a little bit. There's a ton of places on the list, so we had to keep going, and our first destination of today is none other than the Pike Place Market. So uh, we're on a rush to now head over there. And as we're doing that, I wanted to introduce you to our team today. I have managed to assemble an all-star team with a pure goal of winning the top prize. <laughs> so uh, we have none other than Bob. Uh, but he also runs a YouTube channel called Bobco85. He is the South Seattle expert of today. And that will come in super handy as we're going to ride all over there as we're heading into Rainier Valley. Then we have Jamie here in the yellow kit he's super experienced in the area having done a ton of seattle bike tag and lastly we have parth who has been featured on the channel the climbing machine and this ride starts with us following parth which may or may not have been a great idea because he has the lightest bike and the best legs and he leads us straight up into a steep hill but our group won't be deterred as we all sort of just make our way over this and start navigating downtown uh, we just keep going along Bumpy. Dude, you bring us on like such a hardcore route. Dude, what are you doing? <laughs> oh my goodness, not like this, yo. Not like this. Uh, can we that be the last call so my arm is tired already? So after being shaken to oblivion and having my arms being sore now, I figured it was my time to lead. And a cool thing about this ride is that you're going to see a ton of different parts of Seattle as well as a lot of upcoming projects that are happening to improve the bike infrastructure. So here's a good example. We're on Pine. Here on the left, you can see the comings of the uh, protected bike lane and installed already is this new railing and that is all super actively in construction I'm gonna wait till things really settle down and finish before showing it to you all in its complete form So look forward to that as it's definitely gonna be a huge game changer for how people roll from Capitol Hill to downtown All right, we're here at our first stop Pike Place Market. We need to go grab something from some vendors So we're looking at our manifest now and see what we can get So a great part about doing this as a team is that you can have one person look over the bikes and doing our first photo challenge I put the Seattle bike blog sticker onto a nearby rack So now we are on the hunt for some items So here on the left is an idea of what we were looking for pretty typical things but at the same time They were sort of random and definitely was gonna be a challenge for some of the non food items Especially but we just came here to a local vendor noticing that things were at a tourist price But I found it to be worth it for uh, the cost it's going to and just the fun that we were having all right got, got it thank you. thank you all right got some lentils and beans to start more cobbles cobbles all day 
so I was clearly traumatized by my bumpy experience earlier, but that's all right because this is the end of it. And so far we've had no mechanical. So we're heading over to Wajimaya, the international district. And I gotta say, I'm having a blast right now. I think it's sort of cool because I'm finally applying all my Seattle bike knowledge in like a very active challenge. It felt like sort of the amazing race sort of thing. Just a good buzz of energy and our group was definitely very knowledgeable as well as Seattle, so we never once had to really stop or really look at any directions. Here are the next stop, Wajamaya. So uh, we think that we're probably gonna be able to get a lot of the non-food items here. So let's go in and take a look. So Wajimaya definitely has a ton of stuff, but yeah, whoever is the benefactor will get some Japanese toothpaste and definitely some of the fanciest hedgehog thermal socks. All right, so we need a slow park down. So I'm thinking I'd get him a nice packet of, of how many pounds is this? Five pounds of rice to help him out. Sweet. <laughs> so with that wrapped up, we now head over to Beacon Hill to get to a Mexican grocery store, La Esperanza. And yeah, a uh, quick note I wanted to put here is sort of what kind of bikes we have. So I am riding my commuter bike fully loaded up with panniers and even a big bike lock. Bob and uh, Jamie have similar setups and then Parth has his carbon road bike and just a small backpack. So that's why I went that extra mile to sort of help him out. As definitely we had some hills to climb as we head towards Beacon Hill across the Jose Rizal Bridge here and then get onto Golf Drive passing by some of the improvements that I showcased before. If you've been watching the channel then you know I love hills but man uh, being a small dude on a heavy bike it is very very encumbering but nonetheless we just keep pedaling and we make it there to our next stop. All right so we made it to our next stop a much smaller sort of grocery here in Beacon Hill so we got Come out here again, grab some more stuff and keep going along. This was finally my chance to get a break as I am watching the bikes this time as opposed to the previous two stops. Right, so far it's been pretty action packed. We've just been running from place to place. So this is the first time I started taking a break. Parth, how are you feeling so far? Pretty good. Super yep. fun. Of course. And then you can see all the lines of other people doing crazy giving as well. Lining up their bikes. And some people here too. Here's some of the haul from this stop. Some some tricks mix and uh, some nice authentic hot chocolate. Probably the funnest part of this event for me was the fact that you just saw so many cyclists wherever you went because basically there was a set list of places so out of the 85 that were split along South Seattle basically they were going to end up near the same place so it just felt like we were in some type of biking twilight zone where it's just normal for everyone to just get a ton of groceries albeit it's just a funny list of them and everyone's getting the same things it still created an awesome sense of community as we're going through some of these greenways now in the south seattle area and so far the day has really just flown by we need to be back at the start at 2 p.m and we started at 10 and i think it's already like 11 30 so more than a quarter way in and we still haven't finished everything to get to the halfway point. But now we're headed over to drop some food off in a food pantry before heading over to PCC. So check out that view of Seattle from here at Jefferson Park. Nice, really clear, bright day. Hi Bob, why? <laughs> Now yes, we're following Bob who is super knowledgeable about this area. He leads History Rise and other things that you should all check out. But definitely we were in good hands here as we now head on to the Chief uh, Siach Trail. It's a really nice windy path that goes through a lot of residential neighborhoods with also some pretty spectacular views. We run into some hiccups with the food pantry we were looking for not being there anymore. But nonetheless, we still uh, find our way and end up at another one. We found ourselves a, a food pantry and even has a fridge. So this is for the bonus challenge and extra points. So Bob is loading it now with some dairy, milk and cheese. And uh, time is actually flying by amazingly fast. It's already 11.42. So I think we're gonna start making our way slowly towards the first drop off point. So that puts us right at halfway and let's see what we'll do from there. So if you're having as much fun as I am, please roll that like button and subscribe. I cover all sorts of things, Seattle cycling from bike infrastructure to local events like this. And I would love to really showcase more and more of the things like this just to get everyone all on their bikes 
bikes and helping out the local community. As we are now at the PCC in Columbia City, right next to the drop off point at Bike Works, so I'm ready to go shopping some more. We're definitely left with a pretty random list of items as I found it so funny that the attendants were definitely noticing a pattern of cyclists looking out for diapers and infant formula. Alright, here's some walnuts. We'll grab those. And then... Alright, so diapers? Alright. Really expensive diapers. Duh! <laughs> we're tall, we're going big today! Mac and cheese. Another, another favorite. All right, we can get this. That's fine. Or what? What is this? Tuna. Oh, this is tuna. All right. All right, we'll go with this. Don't worry, you just finished the PCC. I finally spent did some of the work to load up my panniers, so and then we're gonna head over to the bike works now to drop it off. So let's keep going. So after a very short ride, we made it to the halfway point and there was a lot of people and a lot of energy here which I really appreciated. Everyone here is just relaxed and just having a really good time as we were, everyone was bringing in their hauls of groceries as well as starting to get their points counted. As here is Bike Works, a place that I've been meaning to visit and you can just see all the food that's starting to pile up here. They said at the end of the event there was like over a thousand that was even collected just at this stop. So now we got the second list that was bring us back to the start and of course to the much awaited after party at Central Cinema after. Just finished dropping off for the first round and then now we're heading out to grocery outlet so let's go. So as mentioned we are now headed back north and we decided to take the most direct route possible passing by I-90 to score some extra points and then end up at grocery outlet and this part of the ride definitely was the most treacherous as we decided to as the probably the bravest bunch of cyclists here just go on the main roads of Rainier Avenue and Martin Luther King so for those that have ridden in these areas you'll know that it's really not that great to ride here uh, starting with Rainier luckily for a lot of what we were doing, there was a bus lane that we can ride in, but even still, there was still a lot of cracked pavement all throughout that you really need to watch out for, as well as just a lot of car and traffic. But soon we do make it to MLK. And this is the, my first time ever riding on this road as I just don't usually end up along on this path. But I do know that there is a upcoming safety project that they just broke ground on to add some protected bike lanes here. So I'm excited to see that because Riding here, it is not very great as you can clearly see, but nonetheless, we just keep pedaling forward and make it to our next grocery stop. No other cyclists, what a surprise. All right, gotta grab some of these things. Here, it's fitting for me to grab the Kiko Mans. Here, yeah. Nice. Some favorite pump yeah. pure pumpkin in a can. Yeah, exactly. this one's pretty good. Chicken and sausage gumbo. Does this count? Yeah. 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 This is chunky. Leave it up to you guys. Which peanut butter we get? Creamy or super chunk? Uh, let, let me know in the comments below. <laughs> this is our grocery run. This is the most assorted items I've ever seen. Oh, See tons of bikes. We finished most of the list. It's now right about 1 o'clock, so we need to get back to uh, Bird uh, Place. I keep forgetting the name of it, but yeah, we need to get there by 2 p.m. So, wish us luck. So here in the final hour, there wasn't too many places to hit up anymore. We were pretty close to the finish, so we wrapped it up over at PCC, grabbing a couple things as well as going to Safeway. And yeah, what still really gotta say, one of my favorite parts also about this whole thing was also exploring new roads. So here we are at the 22nd Avenue Greenway as we just made it to finally get our last item. All right, so we got our last item, the adult diapers. And uh, yeah, let's see how they fit. I'm sure it'll be fine. But I don't think I've ever carried something like this before. They got your bike. Thank you. And they fit with super ease. All right, we're good. All right, let's get going. Nice, so we're all done here. We're gonna head back now. Final hill with all the groceries left. Let's go. Oh. oh, it's so heavy. Oh my goodness, part is long gone. 
So my bike is definitely proper heavy at this point. Even with just the lock and panniers, it feels like a tank compared to my Athos Carbon Road bike. And on a small guy like me, it definitely just feels like half my weight is into the bike. But nonetheless, we persist and then we make it all the way back to the start. All right, so we made it for the final drop off here. We got all our items. We cleared the second list, and uh, I think we're good to go. So let's see how it, let's see how it works. We took some time now to drop off our groceries and get our point totals. Uh, keep, stay tuned because now we're actually gonna do some interviews with Tom from Seattle Bike Blog and Maxwell from Cascade Bike Club, who were sort of the main two organizers behind this event. So I really wanted to hear their perspective about what how they found everything. All right, so we're here at Central Cinema with none other than Tom from Seattle Bike Blog, one of the main organizers for this event. So yeah, what do you think this year? Oh, it was amazing. The, the turnout's been awesome. The we had uh, unfortunately. Uh, the weather never behaves. This is supposed to be a, a bad weather ride. Yeah, it did they, not end up that way at it's all. It's just plagued it, it, with good weather. It was so. super nice. There was people everywhere. Uh, what made, yeah, any other differences from previous years before? Oh, you know, this is the second year that I've partnered with uh, the Pedaling Relief Project to put it together. And just the amount of organizing that they've put in and all the volunteer help has just made it go so easy and smooth and uh, yeah, it's just wonderful to to just be able to sit back and just watch it happen. And I, I'm not running around with my, you know, yeah. uh, pants on fire. It was all taken care of. So. Okay, I test you. It was going pretty well in the field. So didn't hear about anything major. So yeah, yeah. nice. Anything what, you... Oh, yeah, go ahead. What did you see? What I see? I just saw bikes everywhere. I mean, like every single grocery store was like 10 bikes <laughs> just wanting to buy like infant powder or something. So <laughs> it was sort of a fun sort of thing. But yeah, it was really, really cool. That's great. I thought, anything you want people to know for about this event for next year or maybe what's what's next? Yeah. No, I mean, I think the main thing is, uh, you know, you should do this next year, but also you can don't have to wait. You can sign up for a, pedaling a spot relief. at P Pedaling Relief Project. That's right. And you can do this. They do things every week. Exactly. It, they're also really fun. You know, not as not as many costumes. But yeah. It, it's it's a really fun way to just uh, you know go on a ride, meet some new people, and uh, you know help out your local food bank. So. Perfect. All right. Thanks so much, man. Yeah. Thank Touch you. you around. So I'm here with Maxwell from Cascade. Uh, yeah and he was one of the other half of the main organization behind this event. How do you think it went today? Yeah, it went spectacularly well. So we took like everything that we learned. So we were used kind of a completely uh, new model last year, right? right. We, we went from one food bank to three food banks and we learned a lot of lessons last year and this year and we still broke our record oh. last year, right? And we learned a lot of lessons, and this year we, we took all those lessons and we just, you know, That's made great. everything a lot more smooth, got extra volunteers, um, and it looks like we're going to break our record again. Yeah, but yeah, what would you want people to know People to know about the next Cranksgiving or sort of what's next with all this? Well, yeah, I think the, uh, the next Cranksgiving, uh, we'd probably want to try, you know, try something new again, mm -hmm. right? Keep it you know, maybe a new place, maybe involve some new food banks, right. uh, just to keep it fun and keep it challenging. Um, and what I want people to know is, <clears throat> I mean, what we're doing is just like the tip of the iceberg in the support that right. the cycling community can give, you know, people who are experiencing food insecurity and the food banks that, that help make their lives uh, a lot better and help right. support our community. And I think, uh, if we can learn anything, it's uh, use this experience to involve your friends and maybe do like a monthly mini mm. Thanksgiving or something just to stay involved with your local food bank. That's right. And I mean, there's the pedaling Pedal relief, relief project. project. You can right? talk a little bit about that too. What yeah, yeah. That? So, so uh, I run, I manage a group in which we run uh, or we organize weekly rides in which we deliver groceries for a local food bank or rescue food for them. Um, so that's kind of the flip side. So yeah. everything that we're donating to the food banks is going to go out right. on the back of a bike trailer next week. Right. Right. So it's full circle. Full circle. Uh, full circle. As long as that circle is 700 C. I guess last question, question, because I know you've been so involved in this sort of volunteer space. Like what? What, what's your motiv motivation to do this? Like just I, I love 
just getting people motivated mm. and organized for to, to make the world a better place. Okay. And that starts with your local neighborhood. Got it. You know, you make your local neighborhood a better place. And we can't, like, we can't go and build bike lanes. Mm. We can't go and, uh, and, you know, mandate better schooling. Mm. We can't go. So there's a lot of, like, big right. things that we can't, don't really have yeah, control of. Yeah. But one thing that we do have control of is getting getting people food. Awesome. And Thanks so much to Maxwell. Thanks so much to Cascade for putting this all together. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. So. And <laughs> yeah. nice. so the event concluded here at the cinema with a presentation going over the numbers, 168 riders, 3,700 pounds of food going to those in need, a really fun costume party with a bunch of big turkeys up on the screen, prizes to be given out, including two big burly trailers that was pretty neat and donated in, and a lot of uh, Tyvek jerseys that Cascade had, and yeah, just a lot of food to enjoy in the area as well. So let me know in the comments below, what did you take away from this video? What did you enjoy the most? Have you ever tried delivering food or will you in the future? I think that is probably a good spot for us to start wrapping it up. All right, so that concludes this year's uh, Cranksgiving 2023. It was a ton of fun and so many people. I just love how local the whole event felt. So let me know what you thought in the comments below and I'll see you all in the next video.